Yeah. All right, so why don't you tell us now, because we've talked about all this great stuff, who are you, dude, and what do you do? Uh, do you know, I'm just a dude who works out of his basement in Brandon, Manitoba, so. This is good stuff, I mean, <laughs> seriously. Um, my name is James Chambers. I'm an ASP.NET IIS MVP. Um, I'm, I've been a four-time awardee, and I'm just really loving the new stuff in Azure and on ASP.NET vNext, ASP.NET 5, I guess we're right. called now. Um, and so, yeah, I blog in this space. I'm working in this space. And this opportunity to work with the Already crew is just awesome. Like, to take our craft and to apply it to something that's, like, for the greater good is just really cool. As far as the queues go, what we what we wanted to do was to basically, you know, take the workload that was happening in the website itself okay. and move it off into the cloud. We let's let the website keep moving as quickly as possible, but the long running tasks, the I/O, the email sending, the calling the REST APIs out to send SMS messages. Uh -huh. We want to make sure that that's not tying up the tasks on the website proper. Uh, I see, because traditionally what's going to happen is if you send an email on the web server, there's going to be some thread on a whatever web server that's sending an email. Exactly, and we're waiting for that to go off and, and send the email. So instead of doing that, we new up this command, we put in all of the details that we need to, we post it onto a queue, and then we've got a job that's running in the back end, a web job, okay. that's just part of our Azure website. Got it. Um, and it runs in the back end, and when it's triggered automatically when a new entry goes into the queue. I see, so whenever the queue, whenever something goes into this queue, it's just some like database kind of thing, right? Um, Why that, don't you explain a little bit what a queue is? Sure. This, so the storage queue uh, is one of the uh, features of Azure, and it allows us just to post a message. And in my case, all I'm doing is taking that command that I've got. I use json.net to serialize it as a sure. json document we pitch it up just as a string so it's super easy uh, and then on the on the other side of it when that queue is actually when we want to start processing the queue mm -hmm. um, you know and back to what a queue actually is it's it's just a it's just that it's just you know yeah. the, the way that we think about it you stand in line for something and then eventually you get to the front of the line so the queue works that way as well and the storage queue there's some cool things about it like it's going to keep retrying for us if there's failures mm -hmm. and everything rather than writing all of that logic inside of our app we just install the Azure SDK, throw our message onto the bus, and then uh, we wait for it to be triggered in our web job, and that's on a completely different process. Awesome. So yeah. you're saying you're saying three things, like you said, line, queue, and bus. Those all represent the same thing. Yeah, effectively, yeah. And it's just um, some common terminology that we use or or whatever. But the the line, the bus, the the queue. Like I mean, lines more human stuff. Mm -hmm. The bus is kind of what we call it internally. There's you know, it's there's service bus. There's mediator that we use as one of the patterns that oh, we okay. use in here as well. And so it's just that like, more of a design pattern or conceptual thing. Mm -hmm. The storage queue is actually the name of the thing that lives in Azure. So that's if you're looking for it as a service in Azure, that's what it's called. As a and so you're also saying that when you put something into the queue, it notifies something that I have work to be done. Exactly. So we've set up, again, with using the Azure SDK, we set up this web job that gets deployed side by side with our site. And it is automatically triggered. There's a job host that's run. We uh, specify some config so it knows how to connect to the right part of Azure, and there's a connection string that's used much like when you're talking to a database. Sure. Um, and But it's really simple. It's like five lines of code, and then uh, the job host keeps running, and whenever any of the functions that we export that have that are tied explicitly to a specific queue, when a new message goes in, it will just automatically spin up a new process with that running in it, and it'll execute whatever code we've got to process the message coming out of the queue. So that JSON document that we were talking about storing earlier, it's just going to pop that off. We use JSON.NET again to deserialize it, and then we can work with that like a normal .NET POCO. Well, let's let's take a look at it. Maybe you can show us the message, and maybe you can show us some code that pushes it into the queue. Do you have that? Yeah, absolutely. OK, so I'm um, driving into our application. So this is the already application. And in the admin area, what I was working on was this concept of the activity admin controller. Okay. So on the front end of the website here, if it is running, as an administrator, I'm logging in. And one of the scenarios for notifications that we want to use is when we have an activity that's set up and there's all these tasks that need to be completed, we're going to assign volunteers. Uh, these tasks. So okay. we want them to be notified. You know, you signed up to help on this project. Here's an opportunity for you to help. This matches your skill set. We'd like you to try this out. So we go in as an administrator. Um, I go into our campaign list. Um, we've got this idea of uh, the smoke detectors campaign. So I go into here. Maybe I'm, you know, I'm actually looking for the firehood prevention days. And I'm going to drill into this specific uh, day. And I, I want to assign some volunteers. So I'm going to assign tasks here. And then I can just pick these guys up, 
assign them to the tasks that we need to. And when I say assign users, that actually goes off into the back and that's when that queuing happens yeah, and all those, message, right, yeah. the message goes onto the bus and then the application comes back as quickly as possible. Oh, that's awesome. Well, let's look at the code of uh, how you can do that. Absolutely. So um, in the code itself here, we basically, we get a list of all the updates that are coming in. We have, um, you know, we just knew up a couple of lists. We add anything that was, that had been changed from the view model that's posted back into our, mm -hmm. uh, our uh, controller action here. And then very easily, we just set up a view model for this command and we send it off to the bus. And that's that's all that's needed to make that happen. And right away, we return, the website gets to keep moving along. Got it. So the bus, what kind of object is that? So that's actually a, a library called Mediator, okay. uh, created by an uh, uh, active member of the ASP.NET community, Jimmy Bogard. So, oh, of course. Yeah, open source project, uh, really easy to use, and really does a great job of cleaning up any of, the, any of your dependencies on your controllers. So rather than having to inject all of these different repositories and services into your controller, the concept here with Mediator is that you just, in, you just inject the bus, and then whenever you want to send something off to be dispatched, you put the command on, and it'll find the, the correct handler and deal with that message on the other end. So now we've sent it to the bus, we can look at the handler on the other side. Interesting. So let, let, can I see where you nude up the bus? Because I'm interested in sure. how. Sure, yeah, so the, the bus is just simply, it's using dependency injection, so it's That's up it. in the constructor Got of the it. class, and all we're doing is passing it in right I here. Mediator. Okay, cool. Right, now in over the course of this, obviously we're doing some refactoring, so these other services are actually gonna go away, and as we move everything over to commands and queries and, and use the bus, then those other services disappear, and the only thing injected in our controller is the iMediator. So maybe you can help educate me. Are you guys using the CQRS type pattern? Command and query, but we're not doing full-blown event sourcing. Got it, yeah. got it. Okay. So now that's, I've got my bus that gets passed in via DI. I've got my controller here that does the interesting awesome. bits of building up my model. I send it off to the bus and then without waiting for any crazy processing to actually happen, yeah. I get to just resume rendering the website. Can I look at the, can I look at the concrete implementation of the bus that's being passed in? Um, the concrete implementation of the bus, like at the wiring for IOC, or do you mean the the one that Jimmy Bogart wrote? Well, so you're passing in the one that Jimmy Bogart wrote, right? So as that's a concrete one. The mediator actually provides the bus for us. That library provides the bus for us, and, awesome. and then all of the res everything happens internally in that library. And then, so there's a place in startup where you have to tell it anytime. It asks for that I mediator, is it called? That's correct. You need to pass this one. Where's that code? Right. So actually what we've done is we've set up Autofac, which is another Got open it. source project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And rather than uh, newing up each of those or creating a, a, a mapping for each one of those, we're actually just scanning the entire DLL oh, that, for anything that's exported with that signature. So I see. you'll see in our um, under our features, we've got notifications. And when I look at a command, a command is defined as an I, I request. request yeah. And so the I request is one of those things in Mediator. When you scan the assembly, you find the I request and then you know, hey, these are these are the kinds of things that are going to be coming into I Mediator. See. How does it know to do it, use them as singletons or, or instances. You can actually configure that kind of stuff got on your it. own. There's an advanced, like you can d dive in and do that as you need to. On the on the other end of it here, we've got a request handler and it says, hey, this is the kind of thing that I know about, this notifi notify volunteers command. So now when the command hits the bus, the bus looks around and says, okay, what classes do I know about? That's the handler and then away it goes. It also, it, this is direct command and handler, but there's got also it. a pattern that lets you do pub subs. You can publish an event and then you can have any number of listeners that are actually going to pick up and queue off of those whatever you've sent out. Awesome. Well, let's take a look at the one for sending messages. It looks like it's right there. Yeah, this is it right here. This is the command, and you can see it's it's pretty straightforward. What we're doing is we've got a single command that lets any caller uh, choose to send out the SMS messages, the email messages, or both. So you build up that body of SMS recipients, you build up the body of email recipients, and when you pass that in, if there's anything in that collection, it's gonna loop over them and then queue the messages. I the see. SMSs have a recipient and a message, the email recipients have an email and a subject, and a subject as well. And we're actually, because we're using SendGrid, we're actually gonna be able to use templates as well, so all the emails that go out are gonna look like super, like. Awesome. Yeah, so they're, gonna, gonna, they're gonna look tight. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. So then all we do is we throw, we after we for each through that, we um, serialize the object and we punt it onto the bus and then it go, or into the storage service. And that is again, something that's just pushed in here. Injected that, in. Right, and that storage service, that IQ storage service is actually built on top of the SDK, For the IQ. Azure SDK, right, the, right, exactly, yeah. And so that's cool. So whenever you're, whenever you're sending a message here, you're not really sending a message, you're just saying, we're gonna defer this to later, yeah. and we're gonna put it on the queue and let let that take care of it. Exactly. So exactly. let's can we see where the event happens when, when you actually get the queue, the message in the queue, and then 
it notifies somebody that it gets a message? Right, and th this is the super simple part. Um, so down here, we've got a web job called Notification Processor, mm -hmm. and you configure it to deploy side by side with your web app. Right. When you actually, the tooling in Visual Studio 2015 now supports, you can like right click and add a web job to this oh, website deployment. Oh, that's deployment. so much nicer than it used to be. Way easier. Remember you had to put it in this weird folder? Yeah, before? and there's like yeah. some config stuff yeah. and XML and all that kind of stuff, and it was it sucked. But now it's like really fast, super easy to do. And it deploys to the same slot as your website, so there's no additional costs or anything right. like that. But it'll all run in separate processes. So even though it's in the same slot, it somehow manages to be a separate process. There's some child process thing that's going on. It picks them up because um, I'm assuming that's the way it works. Because when I uh, when I send it off, it, like and I'll put myself into the queue five times, I get five text messages like that. There's and you see the five different. Um, uh, there's a DQ thing going on, and it happens right. In, like one right after the next. All right. Well, let's look at the job, getting the stuff off the. Right. So to start up the job, what we do um, in my case, I'm using user secrets. Yeah. So the Azure storage connection string is stored in my user secrets, and this is, or in this case, an environment variable. I apologize, mm -hmm. um, and but that's the pattern that you know that pattern that we're doing. Got it. Probably got some refactoring here to make it use the configuration that's built into mm -hmm. ASP.NET and stuff like that. But we're getting there. Um, at this point, it just builds up a job host configuration, uses that connection string for where we want to. There's the storage piece and the dashboard piece. Got it. The really cool thing about the dashboard is that works like your console. So like when I'm working locally, this is just uh, you know it's a it's a program. I've got a um, this is just yeah. a command line application, so I can run it locally if sure. I want to. Um, in the cloud, though, the logger that is injected, and I'll, I'll show you that in a second over in the functions, the logger that's injected, anything that you're um, pushing out to the log will show up in your dashboard. And then you that's can- That's cool. Yeah, like it makes debugging like so oh, I know. easy. Because Especially, these, yeah, because these things, these things, it feels like these things sort of run in this black box, and then you're like, did it work? Right, and you have no idea, yeah. but you can instrument that very easily and just put, um, push to this log, and then everything's there. Especially when you're doing like, you know, you know, in production when you're under load, and something starts going wrong, finding the needle in the haystack's like almost sure. po impossible. So having the log there and understanding what's happening, and if you've done a good job of instrumenting and logging out your state, then this becomes a really trivial thing to debug. It. And it looks like the job host is the actual thing that's gonna be running these, the, all this stuff. That's right. So so we do we do run and block, and then the the way the SDK works is it scans for anything that looks like something that is part of the Azure SDK. Right, so I've got this functions.cs, and I've got a process SMS queue message. It's got a queue trigger a property attribute on it, mm -hmm. and when when this compiles, when this builds, when this runs, it dives in and pulls these functions out and says, this is something that we're going to use to participate in that job host. Okay, so let's look at the queue trigger attribute that's happening on this function. This is saying, right. anytime this SMS-pending-deliveries queue, I'm, I'm assuming that's a queue it's name. It's a queue, though. that's right, exactly. Anytime something goes into that queue, execute this function. Exactly. Okay, got it. Yeah, and then so, you know, we we know that it's that JSON object that we had serialized previously. Sure. So we deserialize it back out. We've got a shared type with a common core sure, sure, library sure. or whatever. So we deserialize that back out. We read from our environment variables to pull out things like our Twilio ID and our token, the phone number that we're sending from. And then all, then the rest of it is send the two. We got the message that we've got. We create an instance of the Twilio REST client. This is all like code that you can just pull right off yeah, of there. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we just uh, send it out if there's an exception, if there's something goes wrong with sending it via Twilio, they populate this REST exception object. So if that's not null and there's a message in there, then we know something went wrong and we just log it out. Man, you're going full Elvis operator and string interpolation. I know, I love it. Hey, it's, it's great. great. C sharp stuff. six. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let me get some of your feeling because you've been you've been an IS MVP for a long time. What do you think of the new direction of ASP.NET 5 MVC6? So uh, you know, <laughs> There's a lot of cheese movements, like you know, the kind of the, the joke <laughs> yes. is that hey, who moved my cheese or whatever. There's a lot of cheese movement, of and, course. And at the same time, you know, they, they're trying to make the point that a lot of the things are still the same. I'm still going to do a file new project. I'm still sure. going to do a right click deploy, or I'm going to check it into GitHub, and I'm going to do a, a repository based sure. deployment or things like that. So those those basic mechanics that we know are the same. When you start drilling in, yeah, there's a lot of changes, but it's enabling a lot of really cool things too, and it's it's actually giving us a chance to rethink some of our best practices. It's you know it's the MVC pattern, but there's all this other tools here as well. So like uh, the idea of injecting a service into a view or using a view yeah, component without having to sell it to do that. Yeah. And and it's and uh, you've got IOC, which is a uh, first-class citizen across the entire board now. Like this is 
this is really good. So, and if it, if it doesn't do enough, if that container doesn't do enough for you, then you can replace it with your own. So if you right. want to use Structure Map or AutoFAC or whatever you want to use Ninject, then you just swap that out and use that instead. So I think there's a lot of really good little nuggets in here. And I mean, you look at things like how fast Kestrel's running now. Yeah, and it's really fast. Like crazy fast. I think they were showing now like uh, half a million requests a second on static files or something. Yeah. Like that's mind-blowingly fast, like eight times faster than Node or something sure. like that. So. Well, thanks yeah. so much for spending time on this, bud. Yeah, absolutely.